Well, we're so far ahead of the pack now that I figured we'd turn the engine off and get some sails out. So even if we sail just at four knots, uh, this gives a chance the, uh, for the other guys to catch up with us. Um, I'm not sure what's going on at the back there, but it seems as if we're very slow and uh, ESCOM have asked that we slow down a bit, or at least group back together anyway. So I think uh, Sharon and Lindsay on Songlines 3 are shimmying along the back end and trying to get them to catch up with us. So I figured we'd slow down a bit because it means that we can get the sails out and do a little bit of sailing. <laughs> Engine off. great about this is that this is sailing with a purpose. I think all that time we spent in and around Kota Kinabalu we were often just going up and down the coast just for the sake of just being out on the water and maybe getting to a destination but no more than 30 miles away. This is different, this is, this is what cruising is all about and that is to turn the engine off, get the sails out with a purpose, to be heading towards a destination. And that is something we haven't done in a very, very long time. It just feels marvellous. Cannot describe. It's a shame we don't have all the sail out. You can see uh, we've got a good reef or so in the Yankee, maybe a bit more. And that's just to keep our speed down. Of course, we don't even have the mainsail out. It's literally uh, jig and jigger, uh, jib and jigger and our stay sail. So yeah, it's just nice. Just gentle cruise. I mean, look at this weather. <laughs> We've got rain over there, but as I look out across this horizon, it's just beautiful. Oh, occasionally we hit over five knots. I just keep hoping that uh, we don't get asked to slow down because we're still ahead of everyone else. But actually two, no, even three of the other boats are pretty much behind us. So it's just going oh, it's so good. I cannot describe what it's like to turn that engine off, especially on a hot day like this. It saves on fuel and the noise and the movement as well, you know. For me, sailboats are obviously designed to sail, state the obvious furlong, but uh, it, there's something about the movement of sailing versus motoring through these very gentle waves that just, it's, it's cathartic. This happened within the first hour. Liz with her new gear, which she spent yesterday, remember, cursing and swearing, obviously works because uh, within, what, 20 minutes of putting the line out, we have a mackerel. And if you remember, previously we talked about how to dispatch fish. And uh, so we got the knife out, we went straight for the, through the eyes. It was a bit difficult because of course it was fighting like hell but uh, it seemed to work. Main sail out, hitting seven knots now. It's been a long day, it's been a long sail. Um, some of it was a bit boring because we were motoring, but we've been sailing. Uh, Jamie's got lots of footage of us sailing and I think we reached seven knots. Is that yeah. right? Hit seven knots. Hit seven knots. Got uh, one, two, three sails out at the moment. Didn't put the staysail out, don't need it. But we've got the main out, which we haven't put out for a while. No. And that really just gave us an extra knot immediately. And it's not long now, we will be at our anchorage 
within the hour yeah Pretty should nice. have the anchor down so wow oh what a great way to finish <laughs> So this is the island of Tejipil. Um, this was actually my suggestion as a contingency to our other anchorage, but in the end uh, we collectively decided that we're going to anchor here anyway. It's a nice little spot. I don't know who lives here. I suspect this is park ranger or security, uh, but we've got a nice clear bay and we've got this reef that comes off both sides. So I'm hoping, provided we don't get any uns uh, predicted squalls coming from that way, then we should be good. Anyway, still 10 meters, Lizzie's preparing the anchor. We're ready to drop after a brilliant afternoon sailing. I mean, just could not ask for any more. Brilliant. Another early morning start, six o'clock, anchor's up, almost. Had a bit of a dodgy start though. Uh, just turned the chart plot on in the cockpit and noticed that uh, it was not picking up the chart data from the plotter down below. So the plotter down below acts as the master and then the one in the cockpit acts as the slave. And it didn't seem to be working. So anyway, uh, I had to recycle that a couple of times and eventually it came back. But uh, that always makes me a bit nervous when equipment like that doesn't work and this of course we're having to contend at the moment with these two repeaters uh, which show our depth and what have you which we can barely read now they're getting so bad we're going to see if we can order a new a new one at great expense to be shipped to KK for Alvin to get in time for us our arrival in Tawau so there was that then Lisa's woken up decided she's got Covid so she's just doing a lateral flow test right now it's entirely possible that she has, of course, the last few days in KK was spent running around doing lots of shopping and um, the COVID figures in KK were going up dramatically for Omicron. Uh, and then to top it all off, at six o'clock when everyone else is weighing their anchor, Liz decides that uh, she needs a great big poo, one of her long poos. So anyway, all the other boats are in front of us, <laughs> but uh, we're on our way and uh, yeah, it's, it's another similar start to yesterday in that there's a bit of a light breeze just coming off the bow uh, there's quite a bit of rain cloud sort of hanging over the land uh, but what we're hoping is that like yesterday this all sort of blows in that direction and clears up the wind picks up a bit and we do some more sailing so another 50 miles today let's see what happens oh the other thing is uh, we had uh, the fish last night I had three steaks. Liz made me eat three steaks. It's the most amount of fish I think I've eaten. Uh, but uh, it sits so well and feeling strong and healthy. Negative. I've just got a bit of a cold. So that's good, Liz's test is negative, hurrah. Uh, we also just received notification from via Sharon and Lindsay that ESCOM, who have been accompanying us unexpectedly, we weren't expecting that, but they have just reported that there is apparently no suspicious activity around here at the moment. As some of you may have guessed, we are somewhere near where we went to last time when we had the ESCOM escort, uh, but I'm not saying exactly where and when, why and who but uh, yesterday we had I can't remember if I mentioned this we had four boats four ESCOM boats we had the big one that sits outside the perimeter that's probably close to the Filipino border uh, then we had three patrol boats that were going backwards and forwards between us and then I think there was actually even another one so when we moored up last night anchored up by that island there we had the big police boat and then one of the little pilot boats, I suppose you could call it, tied up next to him. And then there was the big rib, that was the other one, that was the fifth one, the big rib, uh, which was tied up to the jetty. So this is encouraging, we, we really weren't expecting this. Uh, but of course we realized that uh, there's only one less boat than there was on the rally last year. So this is effectively uh, Sabah Rally part two, I suppose. I've 
spent most of the morning down below in the galley preparing the fish for tonight and uh, doing the washing up, putting stuff away and sorting out the heads floor and blah blah blah. Anyway, here I am up on deck and we are sailing. Jamie's done a fabulous job. And what are we doing? Five knots? We're making five knots. 12 to 14 knots of wind. Broad reach. It's great. It's lovely. Enjoying it while we can. After two and a half hours of motoring, it's 8.30 in the morning and the wind has come round and is now strong enough that we can broad reach it. So we're just running a jib and jigger. So we just got the Yankee out and the mizzen out. Everyone's sailing, I think. There's a lot of fishing boats around here though. We have to be a bit careful because some of them do have their nets out. So we've seen a few flags as well. There's one right coming right, we're aiming right at it, so I'd better stop and uh, steer it, steer out of the way. The Malaysian Coast Guard now coming around to all the boats and just checking up on us, radioing through to each boat and just making sure that we're all uh, sailing safely. Hopefully, he'll radio through now. Here he comes. Malaysian Coast Guard, this is Espa, over. Change into one seven. Malaysian Coast Guard, this is Esper. Okay, we are put by four three here to make sure you are sailing safe, sir. <laughs> Terima Makasi, everything is all good. Over. Thank you, sir. Enjoy your sailing. Thank you, Roger, and out. Thank you, standing by 1-6. Yeah. The, the, the driver was doing this. The driver was doing this. I was going, everything's great. And he was going, and he went, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> We're at our, approaching our next anchorage. Some of you may recognise it. It is Sandakan and the conditions are not really with us at the moment as we've come in we've got this northerly swell that's coming right in and of course we've got a, a few rivers which are pushing the current out so we've got some overfalls here i'm at the back of the fleet so i can't tell what's going on there lindsay did come through and just say it's not looking good at the yacht club which is normally where we anchor um, but that was 15 minutes ago what i'm hoping is is that the chocolate uh, cake rock that's out the front here gives us a little bit of protection because the yacht club is just around the corner um, but we'll find out in a minute as to whether it's going to be suitable or not <laughs> <laughs> 